Okay. Let's start off with the major disappointment in my life. Sorry. That would be you guys. <laughs> okay, I'm okay with that. You have this tendency to like want to do things the hardest way possible, like you were going to actually take apart an entire freaking aircraft to measure something. I could keep going with resistors, but I don't have any more room. So if I knew for a fact that I had, oh, let's say 10 amps flowing through there, and I wanted to know what the resistance is of this, would the easiest way be to take it all apart? No. What would be the easiest thing to do? What do you mean, find the voltage drop? Well, that's just crazy talk. Yeah, it is. Because if I measure the voltage, and let's just say it happened to be two volts, how am I ever going to figure out what the resistance is? Ohm suggestion. Ohm suggestion. How much would it be? Point two. How freaking hard was that? Totally had a I wasn't picking on you. <laughs> as soon as you walked away, it's like. I forgot the, and you had a brain fog, and some in this row had a brain fog, and some in this row had a brain fog, and some in this row had one, and some in this row had one. And that row did the same thing. It's freaking Ohm's Law. We're at what, week four now? And everyone's like, I have no idea, Kevin. You know the amps. You have a voltmeter in front of you. What's the current? Actually, it's the other way around. So we'll try it that way, just to be sure here. So if you've done something and you have verified, verified that the resistance is, let's say, 0.5, and I said, what is the current flow? How are you going to figure out the current flow? Voltage drops. Voltage drops. How would you do that? Where? I know, I know. Okay, you measure the voltage on the battery, then you subtract the voltage from this one, and then the voltage from this one, then the voltage from that one, then that one, and 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 that one. And then when you subtract all of these from that, you must get this one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is exactly what you guys are telling me. I'm like, really? It's like if you had this component in the airplane, and I said, oh, you got a component in the 747-400, and I said, well, what's the, you know, wh wh what is the uh, current flow through that? Well, basically, I'm going to take apart the whole airplane. <laughs> I don't know how long it would take one mechanic to take apart an entire 747 and measure all of the resistances and put it back in, but I can rest assured you it would take a while, and probably somewhere around day... 1,000, you would probably lose your notes and have to start all over again. So maybe, just maybe there's an easier way than taking apart the entire aircraft. So what would we do to figure out what the current flow is for this circuit? Measure the voltage drop across a single resistor. Which, just a voltage drop across a single resistor? Yeah. That's crazy talk. Would that really work? Yeah. Let's see. So if I put a voltmeter across here, I'm, and I got a voltage drop of, say, 3 volts, so 3 volts, but I knew it was 0.5 because that was a given, how would I figure out what the amps are? <clears throat> and it would be? 6 amps. God, it just seems so easy. But when I put it in front of you, like, dude, I don't freaking know. Do you remember a little project we had long, long time ago whereby there was something like this? And I said, figure out the resistance of the diode. How did you do that? And then used? The projects don't get really any harder they just get different. And so that's why I keep saying, you've got to learn and, and cement what you're doing because it, 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 you just change, it just the scenery changes, but it's the same stupid project over and over for the most part. 
just changing the scenery. That's a new one. I didn't use that analogy before. Okay. So I, I will definitely be crying most of the way home. <laughs> that I tried so hard and I had such great expectations that you guys would learn Ohm's Law. And then today it was like, it's just one day for me to go, what happened? What happened? Okay, so maybe we should take an oath or something. I swear I will not try and take apart the entire airplane to figure out what's wrong with the one. Okay. All right, in all, in all seriousness, you guys aren't alone. It's about the same conversation I have at this point in every class I've ever taught. So obviously I'm doing something wrong. My wife would say, well, if, if the problem is always the same, who is it? What is the one constant in all of those problems? It would be me. So well, I've let you down. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. As is always the case, I have way more notes than I have days left. So where did we leave off yesterday? Theory. What'd you look for? Stash Air. Is it on Instagram? Oh, I'm sorry, what? Okay. Stash Air. The guy you were talking about yet. Stash Air. Denny Pollard? I couldn't find him. Oh. We got okay. Yeah, we got notes. Yeah. Okay, we got notes. Where did we leave off yesterday? Operating hydrometer. Operating theory? Yeah. Yes. Operating theory would be five. I got the hydrometer. Well, something about a something about a hydrometer. Thank you. All right, now I just got to find that. All right, operating theory: the chemical process that occurs beyond the scope. Oh, we did that one. Six sulfate ions, hydrogen. Maybe watching electrons, plate lead sulfate. Uh, oh, battery charges, uh, discharges, electrolyte becomes more? Water-like. Water -like. And then the state of charge of the battery can be checked by using a hydrometer. So if it's more like water, it is? Water. Is it dead or charged? Dead. And if it's more acidy, it's? Charged. I think acidic is the proper word, not acidy. <laughs> I've heard it both ways. You guys see that show Psych? All right, um, charging process. So I'm gonna go a little quick. I'm gonna have to cut out some of the stuff in my notes here, so. Well. Well, you're only gonna listen to, you only remember 20% of what you hear, so I'm just gonna tell you that 20%. All right, charging process. The charging process. Uh, let's see here. The preferred, let's see, current is passed in the bat. I'll kind of read what my notes are and then if I feel like I should write it, I will. Current is passed into a battery at a voltage greater than battery voltage into the positive terminal. So we'll say charging voltage, C-H-A-R-G. Well, that's right. I wasn't going to write notes tonight because you made fun of me. And I got butt hurt. Um, charging voltage must be higher than battery voltage. All right, so we have current is passing into a battery at a voltage greater than battery voltage into the positive terminal <laughs> uh, reverse flow. I'm going to be careful I say that. So that's kind of where I left off is talking about the fact that a battery provides power to the aircraft up until the time when the aircraft is on and the alternator is running then the battery is now just a load. All right now it can go back and forth. Like for example, you know, when I was doing my night check ride in a Cessna 140, it has a generator and a generator requires that the engine operates at a fairly high RPM. It's different between a generator and an alternator. An alternator will charge pretty much at idle. Ge alternator will charge at idle. Generators need to be moving pretty fast. Call it a high coming in speed. So here we are, you know, you're flying along at night and it has two incandescent, you know, 150 watt light bulbs on there, whatever they are. And so 
you turn on your lights and you can look over your ammeter and it's pretty much at zero. So what does that tell me? Maybe positive two. What does that say? Battery's charging. Battery's charging. Okay, everything's looking good. Go ahead and pull the power back, carb heat, power back to go ahead and start your descent. Lights get a little dim and I watch the ammeter go slam. Well, for you, it'd be this way. All the way over to the left side and now it's negative 15. What's happening? Battery's providing power. Battery's providing power. Generator's now offline. And so it's going to provide battery power all the way until it come in and land and you finish your taxi and go around, do a touch and go, you hit the power, and you're going to see that ammeter slam all the way over the other side to a positive 15. Why, why so high now? Charge. Got to charge the battery. Okay. So remember, battery can be a load or a help. It's one or the other. Uh, let's see. Uh, lead, lead sulfate. What happens to a battery that sits dead? It is sulfate. And that sulfate's good or bad? Bad. Okay. As batteries recharge, electrolyte moves from a water-like state to a more acidic. acidic, sulfuric acid state. You can have a problem where you overcharge a battery. I talked about overcharging the battery in the paint room. What happens? Bubbling. Hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas. So you end up with this chemical process that happens and it gives us oxygen and hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas is very Hannah what? <laughs> I just like this because <laughs> you're my Hindenburg girl now. All right, it's what does it smell like? Egg farts. Egg, egg farts. Egg farts. <laughs> gotcha, gross. All right. Um, all right. So one of the things that you want to do when you are well, okay. So if I'm charging a lead acid battery that is oh I forgot I brought these found these last night. These are the caps I was talking about. That screw in and screw out, so I'll pass them both around. One of them is broken, so you can take it apart. And if you look at it, you just tilt it, and you see the little little thing pops up inside. So it's kind of weird how it works, because you take it apart and look at it and go, well, that doesn't, how does that pull up inside? But then when you do it, you watch it, it pulls up inside. And the other one is not broken. We'll see what happens when it gets around the other side. Do you want me to pass it around? Sometimes it is. But I'm in class, I'm going to pass stuff around. Then i got to talk to the guy now. Touch him or something. You're going to get COVID from that. All right. Okay, so when I'm charging a lead acid battery that has those caps, I will always unscrew them and sit them on top. And I do that because it allows it to gas freely out, even though they're vented. Um, and it doesn't allow debris to get into the battery. Uh, but if it's a sealed, uh, the RVLA batteries, what's that stand for? Oh. Oh. All right, you're getting pick out of your notes. Good. So when I'm doing one of those, I like to keep the charging really low. Follow the manual. And you know, because it's not going to gas out, right? But it'll start expanding. And then at what point does it start gassing? What PSI? 1.5. Okay. Um, I have as a mechanic. Man, mechanic rules. We'll put mechanic rules for mechanic stuff. As a mechanic, I wrote this, as a mechanic, you need to understand, one, hydrogen gas is explosive. Sparks near an overcharging battery can explode the battery. This is why, oh, God, I put this point. Um, hydrogen gas is explosive. Gas is explosive. Um, okay. This is why when a battery is being charged slash jumped, so you guys ever jump start a car, yeah. right? There's a rule about how you connect and disconnect anything around a, a charging battery. And that is you always unplug from the wall socket. So if I have a charger, battery's been on a charger and I got the big alligator clamps right here and it's done charging, I'm not gonna go and pull an alligator clamp off and let it spark right here. I'm gonna go to the wall and unplug the charger, turn it off, unplug it, and then when it's dead, I'm gonna come over and take it off the battery. Then as a rule of thumb, which one comes off first? Negative, negative comes off first. Ground. Positive is on the longest, right? Yes. So negative ground. All right, so you always, so if I were jumping uh, an airplane, so my airplane battery's dead, so I pull up my car next to it, and I'm gonna jump my battery. First of all, is that good or bad? Right, it violates FARs right there, unless if I'm going flying. So I can do that, but 
People do it, so let's talk about that. You do it, and you're jumping an aircraft, and the ba aircraft battery was dead. So when you're done and you started the plane, now you've got these jumper cables going to a car or a battery cart. Are you going to do it from the battery first or the cart first? You go to the cart because that theoretically has been fast charging and could be giving off hydrogen gas. So you go over to the cart, disconnect, dead wires, then pull it off there. So disconnect. Let me see. Disconnect power uh, first. Battery second. Or if I'm just using the battery charger that we've been using like crazy over there in the tool room getting batteries going, I'm going to turn it off, then disconnect the battery. I'm never going to just disconnect the battery with, with the spark potential. A boiling battery will vent acid as well. When it gets into the aircraft, it will cause corrosion. Well, that's something to think about. I don't want to write all that, but uh, it's important not to have battery corrosion. It will. It will corrode pretty bad. And so, um, let's see, lead sulfate is bad because, so never leave a battery in a discharged state. Water has a, uh, has a higher freezing point. I always kind of hate that statement, a higher freezing point. You have to really stop and think about it. So let me, let me see. Water will freeze. At what temperature? 33 degrees. Wrong, zero. No. Zero. Celsius. Celsius. <laughs> okay, so water, so, um, higher freezing point uh, than acid. So acid will freeze. Do we know where acid will freeze at? I don't know the actual temperature. It's going to, well, that would be pure acid. Um, I'll just put at a much cooler temperature. So that we're very clear that given a battery that is in a discharged state, which is more water like, right next to a battery that is fully charged, that is more acidic, the one that is dead is going to freeze internally much faster than. The one that is charged, which is then why you want to keep your battery charged in the winter so that it does not freeze. Like, say you're at the class, did you have to like keep it in like a warmer? Man, there are all kinds of different things that go on in Alaska. Yeah, just somewhere where the battery has intense. Well, okay, so like my airplane came from uh, Minnesota, mm -hmm. and this guy gave me all this kind of stuff that I'm like, what the hell am I ever going to do with this? It's got a blanket that wraps around the cowling that has an outlet where you hook up a four draft blower. And then it's got um, electric heaters all over the engine. So you plug in the engine to 110. It has probes that, in all six cylinders that heat up. And heat the cylinders. It's got a plate on the bottom of the uh, oil sump that heats the oil. So that's just Wisconsin, yeah. right? And there's a show on uh, some thing, uh, Hulu or whatever, uh, the Alaska pilots who... Alaska Bush pilots. Yeah. Alaska Bush pilots. You know, as much as I've been around aviation, when I watch that show, my mouth is just open going, are you kidding me? <laughs> Is that real? So it's insane. Yeah. Uh, Jack, 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 submarines in World War II, they... Very much on point. Keep going. <laughs> so they, they wanted to build a carrier sub, and it, to get around the process of having to heat up the engines, they had heated oil tanks they plugged into the uh, engines, so they would cycle the oil through a heater. Okay. Yeah, that's that's common though. Oil exchangers. Yeah. That's that's not a big deal. So, but good. Thank you. Okay. Um, so that's why we want to do that. Maintenance of lead acid batteries. Well, okay, uh, I don't want to. Can you write stuff so I don't have to so much? Um, yeah, no. I don't want to move too fast. When you are especially doing your oral and practical tests, which is, you know, this is all about getting ready for your oral practical test. And remember, I used to do this, and it's so painful sometimes to see how people act. It's like you. They weren't trained for the oral practical. Number one, vocalize what you're doing, right? Um, because one of them is inspect a, uh, an aircraft battery installation. So I'll say, okay, I need, here's an aircraft. I need you to you know, inspect the battery. Okay. I'm done. What's next? 
<laughs> okay, am I going to pass that? No. Are you going to pass? No. no. All right, expect an aircraft battery. You got it, sir. All right, first thing I'm doing as I'm checking for, you can say this for everything. I'm checking for corrosion. That applies to anything. I don't care if it's a magneto, a starter, an engine, uh, the, the, the captain's chair. What, what else? The bulkhead. The bulkhead. I'm checking for corrosion, cracks, leaks. I think I should just maybe start the corrosion, cracks, and leaks. Everything, right? Like a few things you don't have leaks. Well, you don't leak. What do you mean? Well, you never know. But, you know. Okay. Yeah. Just come on. You know, half the time you would just say that. Checking for corrosion, cracks, and leaks. I'm like, Oh, all right, that's fine. At least you said something, your eyes are open. Uh, <laughs> extra points if you had a flashlight, and double points if you asked for a mirror to see behind something. All right, so when you're, when you're doing that, so number one, always wear safety glasses around a battery. Okay, we talked about removing the negative side first, install the negative side last when installing. Don't short circuit a battery because how many amps are in a battery? Okay, in aviation, we don't talk about cold cranking amps. It's just not a thing for us for some reason. But a cold, cr I think I do in here somewhere, but uh, cold cranking amps refer to how many amps are available for an extremely short period of time for a battery. And that's something like this, I'm just gonna just throw out a number, somewhere around, I don't know, north of 400 amps. Yeah. What's that? Car battery, I was gonna say six, but I didn't wanna go crazy. So 650 amps. Mm -hmm. So that'll put a hurt on you. So, well, of course, I don't have to tell you don't short out a battery. Why would you short out a battery unless it was an accident? And if you did, it'd be like, well, it was an accident. I'm like, well, I know, but, you know, just be careful. Um, don't service a battery near open flames or sparks, obvious reasons. Don't jump start aircraft because why? 30 to 60 minute capacity. I have my notes now. 30 minutes for aircraft certified to 25,000 feet and 60 minutes for aircraft certified over 25. That's not on the test. Um, and of course, follow uh, service instructions, service and inspection, follow the manufacturer's instructions. Oh yeah, expect for corrosion and leakage. What do we clean the spills up with? Sodium bicarbonate. Baking soda. Well, which one is it? Sodium bicarb or baking soda? Let's pick one. Oh, it's the same thing. Okay. So one of the things, like, well, I said, you know, I would, on my 150, especially because it was in a, a metal or aluminum battery box, my plane now is plastic, but I still kind of do the same thing. If it would leak, it didn't because nobody poured a bunch of acid in it when they shouldn't have. But I pull the battery out, put a little baking soda down there, clean it up. Don't put baking soda on top of the battery because... They say it can go in there. That's not me. Maybe that's just one of those tails. Um, okay. Check electrolyte level. Electrolyte level. This is obviously going to be a flooded battery. This is not going to apply to any NICAD batteries, nor is it applied to a sealed battery. So don't be opening up the sealed battery. You can open up sealed batteries if you want. Just they're not airworthy anymore. Yeah, you got to pay for it. Yeah, pay for it. I, got some, I had some here. I don't know where they went. I think somebody borrowed them. But uh, I was opening We were opening them up. It's not a big deal. You just pop, pry open the caps and you look in like, well, it just looks like a normal battery. Okay, um, where was I? Electrolyte level. So inside of the battery, here's the top of the battery and here's the cap. You will have these little, the plastic will come down. And sometimes it'll come up just a little bit like that. But the water level, electrolyte level, is some things will say to the bottom and some will say about an eighth inch, eighth inch below, which is nearly touching. So, I'm sorry, three eighths, I think it's three eighths, which is still, yeah, we'll go three eighths. No, I'm gonna change it. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna write a note here. I'll put my notes, and I'll be very specific on what I want you. Okay, to either three eighths inch above the plates, above the plates, which means you have to look in there, and you see the plates down there, and you have three eighths above, or to level indicator.
which is this little thing right here. So on this particular battery, right here, when it comes up and it touches the bottom of these little caps is the level indicator. Not, not in the notch, all up to not, not that, because the notch goes up like on that battery. That notch goes way up here. So don't do that, but to right there. You you could use a, a hydrometer and suck a little bit, but you gotta be careful. You don't want to dilute it. But you're talking just a little tiny bit. Yeah. Overcharge it, it'll spill out, and then you'd be good. Oh, the time. <laughs> <I know. laughs> so I'd use a. You could I suppose if you had to suck some out. You could use a hydrometer. It's not usually a big deal. Um, add only. What? Clean. Still water. Okay, testing. Testing batteries. One, one of the things I'm not having you do this semester, mostly because all the batteries we have really suck, but it, it is something that you do need to understand and know how to do. It's very simple, really. Um, let's see, there, um, there is a thing called a load tester, load tester, and you're going to use that as a switch when you do your battery project across the shunt. It's, you can do use that, but I've, I don't know of any technical data for aviation, number one, to use that. Number two, if you're using this particular thing, it should be calibrated. But what it is, it's just, it's a switch with a, um, I don't want to say very high, it's very low resistance, so it's going to let a lot of current pass through, and this thing gets red hot. But it puts a load on the battery, and you hold the switch on, and you read where, the, uh, basically you're reading the closed circuit voltage across this load and it's either green or red, it's good or bad. But again, I don't know of any data that says that is approved for aircraft use. Is, so, is that thing bad for the battery? Is it basically like a short? No, it'd be like hitting a starter. Oh, really? Yeah, it's just simulating a starter. So there is that load tester. Um, there is the hydrometer test. So. Probably, low tester, probably not a proof aircraft. Hydrometer test. Hydrometer test. All right, and this is only, use it only if water was not just added. So don't use it if water was just added because the water and acid have not, in theory, had a chance to mix and so you're going to get a false reading. But what this hydrometer is, I have one right here. This hydrometer does is you will put the hydrometer into the cell, you will withdraw Squeeze the bulb, withdraw a sampling of the electrolyte. And this, they're all a little bit different. I, I like this one, it's got little floaty balls and you can read it. And it says, uh, if none of them float, it's discharged. Um, if one does, it's 23%. If two, it's over 50. If three, it's over 75. And it's four balls, it's fully charged. And so they all float. A more accurate one is actually going to have a hydrometer it's a, uh, a floaty thing in there, a single floating apparatus that will float in there. Like I have one for my fish tank, and they're kind of cool. If you ever used hydrometers, I have one at home that I found one of the homes I bought. It's like this big. I think it's for beer or something. Yeah. So when you say uh, only if water was not just added, how soon? Like, is there a certain time, or is it? Is it um, I would wait until it had been charged. So it's had a period of charging time on it. Um, yeah, because I just have, if water was added, let battery set. So, so water was not just added. Um, okay, we'll get into the rest of this. Yes, it's last charge, whatever. 
Just say, just now. Would you say since last charge? No, if you just added it, like, hey, I'm going to service the battery. Oh, it's low on water. There's some water. Oh, better do the hydrometer test. <laughs> okay, don't do that. It's more like, well, I'm low on water, so I think I'll do that before the hydrometer test since I can see the plates and I can't get any water up into the, okay, because it's so low, I can't even do it, so I'll add some water. And then I'll come back after lunch. I'll come back in 30 minutes. But you know what? Since you just put water in it, why don't I put it on a slow charge? And I'll come back in half an hour. And by the way, uh, most uh, the shop I was working with, man, they are just, uh, and I did the same thing. I guess they got it from me. I would always, when I was charging a battery, put my car keys by the battery. So I always leave my car keys on a battery charger because I don't leave the battery charger on. I never leave batteries unattended charging, never. And they had a big thing where they put a big, it was a heat lamp. It's the middle of summer. It's 120 outside. There's a heat lamp running. But, you know, big, bright red lamp. And, and so every time you plugged in the charger, they had it wired. So you had to plug, you turn on this light. So when they were closing up for the night, they could always look one scan. Whoa, red light charger. So they could change that. Uh, okay, so. The, I know they could have. I wasn't going to complain about it. Yeah, that's, that's what I wanted. All right. Um, measures. So this hydrometer measures. The specific gravity. Of the fluid. Of electrolyte. As compared to water, obviously, because that's what what it is. So sulfuric acid. Has a higher specific gravity as a higher. Specific. I'm going to abbreviate that SG because that's common specific gravity of the fluid as compared to water. So I like uh, I like fishies. Fish are my friends, and so one of the things that I have is I have a salt water tank. And so does Katie. Is we have hydrometers. And my hydrometer kind of looks like this. If I could only draw nicely, it'd be nice. And it's got a whole bunch of weights down here. And then it'll have like something that's like a green patch right here. And there's a little line right there. And you put it inside your fish tank and hopefully it floats right about there. So if it's floating right there, your specific gravity is good. If it's floating here, it's floating way too high. It's yeah, it's way it's floating way too high. So what does that mean? I've got too much salt, right? So then I have to add some fresh water. But if it's sunk all the way down here, it tells me that there's no salt in there. You know, it's just still fresh water, probably. So I'm exaggerating here. So I got to add a bunch of salt and bring it. So it's the same thing with this sulfuric acid. It's just don't put fish in there. So. It's just a, just a deadly fish tank. Uh, okay, so that means that, okay, I'm not going to write this again, but sulfuric acid has a higher specific gravity. So when the battery is charged, the electrolyte is more acidic. So, okay, acid equals float higher. And, the, and if it was dead, that would be more like water. It would be float lower. Float lower. Save time. See world. We're doing good here. So what are these readings? All right, so 1.3 to 1.275. And by the way, what would a water read on a hydrometer? One. It reads 1. 1 1.0 equals the distilled water. So 1.3 to 1.25 is a high state of charge. <laughs> 1.275 to... 1.240 is a medium state of charge. So 
So what is it if it's 1.275? It is? High medium. Medium high. Medium high. Extra medium. Extra medium. <laughs> <laughs> That's what size that were. All right. Um, and 1.240 to 1.2 is a low state of charge. And what if, well, what if it's 1.1? .1? Hey, it's even lower. All right, the hydrometer, and by the way, it just occurred to me, this is my personal hydrometer. And the reason why I bought and own a personal hydrometer, because everybody should own a personal hydrometer, is because it was in fact one of the things that you had to do on the mechanics test. So. That has been touched by many uh, prospects testing for their a &P. So if you think you're not going to do it, well, you had to with me. That was for sure. It was one of my tests. So you had to do this. And so that's not hard, right? And so I would always, always provide instructions. Or It's not like in your test you'll say, there's a battery. Figure it out. I, I never did that. I'd say, okay, we need to inspect the state of charge of the battery. Um, here's a hydrometer for you. Okay, there's your clue. The directions are on the front. There's your data. Okay, but you, you know, kind of have to understand what you're doing and know where to get other documentation. There's no trick questions. You know, there would never be something like, there it is, and so you squeeze it and you look and you say, well, according to this, it's four balls, so it is, in fact, fully charged. Wrong! I just added water. You didn't know it, and that's not <laughs> approved data. And, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, it may or may not in the manual. I haven't read all the manuals. I think the one has but I know it is, in fact, in 4313. It's in the SAFT one. No, it's not. The SAFT is a, the SAFT is a NICAD, and NICAD does not do this. The gill, but only going to be in the gill flooded. It won't be in the new gill, that, the sealed ones, because you can't. Okay, so hydrometer uh, readings. This is very important because I'm writing it, must be temperature corrected. Now, the problem with the hydrometer that I have right there and also with most of the hydrometers we have in the tool room, they are not temperature correctable. Uh, I do have one hydrometer in the tool room that is temperature correctable, and it is highly breakable. Uh, it is glass within glass, very breakable glass within breakable glass. In fact, you're supposed to take it apart and put foam and stuff in it to keep it from breaking. So if you pick it up roughly, it'll just break. That's why we only have one. So must be temperature corrected. Um, oh, so I'm going to put this for temperature of electrolyte, not ambient temperature. What's ambient temp? That's the temperature of that sleeping pill. So that's the surrounding. So an aircraft just comes in from a, from a long flight and, uh, hey, man, I'm, I'm having battery issues. I couldn't really get it started at the last place. Can you check my battery, make sure it's okay? Fantastic. It's in the middle of winter here, so it's, uh, you know, it's 72 degrees. And so you're all right, it's 70, 72 degrees. And so I'm going to temperature correct this battery. You open up the cowling, you do it, you do temperature reasoning. Well, what's wrong with that? It's sitting this far from the engine for the last hour. Is it going to be 72 in there? Yeah. No. So you need to know what the temperature of that is. How do you know what temperature that is? Um, so I think some of the really more expensive hydrometers actually have a, um, a thermometer on there. Um, other than that, I would use a laser. Um, temperature thing and do the side of the battery or something like that get close so um, AC 43.13 uh, um, shows shows no correction shows no correction at 80 degrees F only 
Do I have that? I think I do. Your textbook states 70 to 90 requires no correction. Why don't you just wait till the battery cools down? <laughs> Yep, start the clock. Pull up a chair and just sit there. <laughs> Working on the boss. <clears throat> Table 11-2, sulfuric acid temperature correction shows no correction is needed at 80 degrees. Your textbook says nothing is needed between 70 to 90. Who's correct? <coughs> Why? Because it's an advisory circular by the FAA? Yeah. Who's, got, who's got their textbook on them? Anyone? Right there. See it. Go ahead. Pull it out. Pull it out. I know. Um, they were called AC 88. Though they had an AC number for a while. Just because it says AC doesn't mean it, but I didn't see it on there. So, okay. So just be careful. Um, so requires no correction. So an example here, right here, the hydrometer test shows not working that 1.240 at 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. So what would my actual hydrometer reading be? At 110, so it's a plus 12. So it would be 13.240? Probably not. It doesn't even touch the, it just floats above it. So, okay. So it's 1.240 plus point, be one, two. See, I like doing things sometimes wrong a little bit just to kind of help you out. So, okay, so we know we're going to not add 12 because that'll be 13. And if I added 12 here, that would end up being 1.36. Does that sound correct? Based on what we just talked about? What was the high state of charge? 1.30. Okay, so let's try it this way. 1.012. How does that work out? 1.252. Does that sound logical? Okay, so if you forget, that's the way to do it. 1.252. So our, our, as my father in law says, the bell ringer, the high, is 1.3. So if you get an answer, more than 1.3 by very much, you have done something wrong. Okay, so there we go. Um, hydrometer test shows one point, oh, erase all. 1.0 one275 at uh, 60 to thank you. You already seen that one. At 60 degrees. What am I at? Okay, 60 degrees right here, which is minus 8. So 1.275 minus 0 0.008. And there we go. Hannah says 1.267. So, um, at 1.275, how did that work out? Was that good or bad? Uh, medium. That was a medium high. That was an extra medium, right? Extra medium. If you're, if you're an uh, optimist, it was a high state. If you're a pessimist, it was a medium state. But now what is it? Medium. medium. 1.267? Solid medium. Solid medium, okay. Solid Yeah. Solid medium. So it's kind of a high down to a medium. Okay, uh, return the electrolyte to same cell. So you suck it out. 
of this cell, you look at it and you blow it back into that cell. Nope, on the floor. And back into that. You're not supposed to mix them. So don't mix them. Yes, Hannah. <laughs> Super battery. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. I don't think it would because well that's just oh that's why. Um I believe that if you just took the electrolyte right out of the jar and measured it, that's as like the most it can go. And so if you can keep adding it and keep adding it, it's I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so are all the cells They are. So check each cell individual. Not just one. And then not only that, you want to check for difference. So check each cell and uh, check. So you, you check the actual level and then check for a difference. So imagine if you will, you know, somebody, yeah, I'm having so many, you know, my battery's so bad. And, and you have to watch out for this. I got a problem with my battery. Well, I'm going to go get my hydrometer and check your, your specific gravity. No, you don't have to because I, the last mechanic did it. He did? Yeah. Tell you what, I'm just going to check it anyway, if it's all right with you. And so you go and you, you check one and you're like, yeah, because it's like this in the aircraft. Yeah, no, that one's fine. See, I told you. You know, like pull that one. Oh, that one's not looking so good. Well, he didn't check the next one. Aren't they all connected? No. Check the third one. Oh, that one's really bad. There's, you know, don't ever assume. Because uh, people do weird stuff. So, like, in the instance where that pilot was like, yeah, you don't have to do it because the other pilot, the other mechanic did, and you still wanted to, but he just didn't want you to, would you just take the light? Send his ass or was he paying your bill? <laughs> Um, I don't know. There's just a nice way of saying it, you know, just like, well, you know, obviously, you know, that person couldn't find a problem. You know, I, I need to go through the troubleshooting steps and you really don't want to pay me for a bunch of extra work. If I can identify something, maybe I'll see something they, they, they didn't. I mean, isn't that why you're here and not back with your other mechanic, you know? Yeah, so let me do my job yeah. or don't let them stand there and watch you. <laughs> so yeah, let me, let me go take a look at it. So um, I had a difference here. I think it was 0.5. Oh, yeah, difference of, check for difference, um, 0 0.050. Um, difference is bad. Difference is not good. Actually, my notes say is showing that it's near the end of its life. All right, then uh, I had power ratings. Uh, I think I wrote this. Voltage per cell is how much? 2.1 voltage per cell. Good, I said that 2.1 per cell. Uh, capacity, we talked about capacity. It's the rating of current for a length of time. So a high capacity. So if I said I had a high capacity battery, how many, um, what's the voltage on that usually? Is that? mean that it's 24 volt Doesn't matter. it could be a high capacity 12 a high capacity 24 it didn't tell me anything it means amp hours so remember an amp hour is amp hour amp hour is amps times hours and okay so aircraft batteries are typically rated at five hours so aircraft this is probably important are rated at five hours. So it may say that it's a, well, I'll go my notes here. So if a battery supplies six amps for five hours, what's the amp rating? 30 okay, 30 amp hours. Could I also say that it supplies 30 amps for one hour? Because the battery is just going to be stamped on it, 30 amp hours. So is it correct that it's 30 amps for one hour? Yes. Yeah. It's not really. Oh, okay. 
Okay. okay. This is the six. This is batteries are rated at five hours. So you could say that, but you would be mistaken to a little bit. So just as an example, it would probably only give you, let's say, 25 amps for one hour. Or would I say that it is um, 30 amp hours? So it'd be 60 amps for. Um, no, I just doubled the amp amperage. So yeah, 60 amps, half hour. So no, I want to do it the other way. Um, so yeah, 15 amps would last you for two hours, two hours but it wouldn't really because it's rated at five. So you have to keep that in mind. I think there's a question on the test that really depends upon you knowing that it's a five hour rating. So like if I said, which is most correct? 30 amps for one hour or six amps for five hours, which is more correct? The answer is five hours, six amps, five hours. So they're both the same, right? Which do it again, which is more correct? It's 30 amps for one hour, uh, oops, with a zero, 30 amps for one hour. Um, I'm gonna get what, 15 amps for two hours or six amps for five hours which one is correct well this equals 30 this equals 30 and this equals 30 so would it be all of the above no because it's really rated at a five hours so if a customer comes to you and says damn it you know I've well, why they would do this i don't know now i was doing some welding with my aircraft battery and i can tell you right now i only got you know 30 amps out of it. I didn't get a whole 30. I only got like 20 some amps out of this thing for an hour. Things bad. No, that's not. Yeah. Okay, so the C rate is still based on this number here. C rate is still the one hour rate. Always. They don't expect you to divide by five or multiply. So, yep. So, okay, what is the C1 rate for this battery? 30. 30. Um, C2 rate? C, 15, the C.5, and the C.1 is, oh, no. no, there's something's not right here. You guys yell out the wrong numbers to me. C.1 is what? Three. 3.0, correct. Yeah. So, point 0.1. So, 15. C2 would be 6. 60. There you go. I say, if, it, if, if it doesn't matter how, rate, how fast the rate is, you can discharge it at 1,800 amps in one minute. I know, yeah, but you can't, and the manual clearly says that. It don't, <laughs> it'll, it'll give you definitive numbers for sure. I know. Batteries charge faster than anybody else, right here. Um, okay. Yeah, so C2, the C2 equals 30 minute rate just to make sure we got it right, because remember, we're screwing up on here. Um, so it's, think, um, I don't wanna write this. C, C1 times two equals C2, if that helps, I don't know. What? All right, never mind. I didn't say that. <laughs> we go, what? If the C1 was 30 times two, then the answer would be 60, but the answer Why did I write that here? 60. Also, 30 minutes, it's a 30 minute rate. Two times the C1, that's what I meant. Two times is fast. Oh, two times is fast. Yeah. Um, okay. Yep. I know. Cold cranking amps. <laughs> Cold cranking amps is, uh, I have 60 seconds at zero degrees, in case you cared. All right. All right, take a break.